Alrighty. What's up, guys? It's your boy James, aka 68J, coming to you on this amazing Monday. And I'm with the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only Armando Pantoja. Did I say that right, brother? Yeah, you got it right perfectly. All right. That's my man, Armando. So uh, I definitely appreciate Armando. Super busy guy. Got so much going on. Uh, but I want to make sure that I give him his uh, due respect and have him on the show to tell his phenomenal journey in this space. Now, before we get started, uh, Armando, if you don't mind, brother, I'd like to know who is Armando prior to crypto? If you can just kind of lighten us on that, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So um, I went to, um, so uh, when I was in high school, um, you know, high school, I did horrible, right? So I had a 1.8 grade point average. Um, so some teachers at school encouraged me to go to college. I didn't really want to go, but I took their advice, uh, filled out an application and got accepted. Um, so once I get into college, you know, I still kind of didn't know where I wanted to do. Right. And the second year of college, I got a, I had a computer science class. So the teacher, when I, once I stepped in that class, I knew that was what I wanted to do with my life. So from that point on, I made, you know, Dean's list, you know, National Honor Society, everything, because it was something I wanted to do. So I went on, uh, became a software engineer. I did that for about four years, uh, did it for about a year or so. Then I, you know, uh, played basketball in Puerto Rico for two years. Oh, wow. Uh, after that, um. So then I came back and was a software engineer again uh, for another three years. And it was like, you know, I, I really didn't like, uh, I liked the uh, the theory of software. Uh, so what I did is I went back to grad school, right? So 2009, uh, I registered for grad school. Uh, so okay. started in 2010. Uh, so they asked me, what do you want to study? So I said, well, uh, I kind of like software security. Uh, well, you need a specialty. And I said, cryptology. And, you know, it sounded cool at the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I get into cryptology, right? Right. And we're talking that cryptology is a study of encryption between computer systems. Like when we send a message from one computer system to the other, how are we going to encrypt it so a third party can't see what's going on? There's, there's hundreds of different ways to encrypt that information, decrypt it, hide it. You know, that's, that's what the study is about. Right. Uh, so I mean, cryptology and all these people tell my cryptocurrency. At the time, I didn't have no idea what it was. It was 2011. Okay. So, um, so I mean, you got to get this, man. Well, you know, back then it was more of a currency. We didn't talk about it in an investment uh, standpoint yet, as of yet, right? We talk about it as a currency. You could buy it. You know, you could do this. It's going to change the world, whatever. And I, we started, I started learning how to integrate it into systems so, you know, sites can accept Bitcoin and stuff like that. Um, and that's really where it started, right? I had no idea I was going to invest in it. So um, I was investing in that. I mean, I was buying it, selling, you know, spending whatever. 2013, uh, Mount Gox happened. Um, so I thought it was over. I was like, man, it's over. It's it, it, the whole, you know, if they can hack a uh, exchange it's over, you know? Right. So, uh, I forgot about it for two years. 2015 came, Ethereum came out. Um, so I got back into it cause I liked Ethereum. It was a worldwide computer system. It was something that I was right down my alley. So, uh, a few months, about a year into Ethereum, there was a, a DAO that got hacked. Okay. And before that, there was no such thing as forks. So I thought it was over again. So I gave up again, you know, 2016. Wow. Uh, the having came seven, 17. Uh, my friend called and said, I mean, you see where Ethereum's at? I bought it my first Ethereum at six dollars, sold it at 40. My wow. friend called me and said, You know, you see where it's at now? So, what do you mean? It's, it's at like 180. I was like, Oh man, and my heart just dropped when he said that. And then wow. I got back into it, uh, around 180 or whatever. Uh, then I started like looking at we started talking. That's when the investment really people start talking about it as an investment store of value and stuff. That's when that really right. started getting hot, right? Uh, so 16, 17, 17, uh, end of 16, I'm at a conference in London. Okay. Um, and uh, and you know, at the time I'm working at AAA, I'm a software engineer at AAA, you know, investing a little bit in crypto, uh, just going to conferences trying to figure out where I can fit in. And it was this guy. So we had a brunch, you know, you know, a bunch of people, you know, I didn't meet at cryptocurrencies. We yeah, had yeah. You know, four or five of us got together. Oh, let's go eat some brunch in the morning. We had brunch. I want to introduce you to this guy. So this Australian dude comes up, man. He's he's you could tell he had a rough night, drunk, sunshades on. Man, <laughs> he sits at the table and he's like, uh, yeah, man. Uh, he said, man, I don't you know, I make I make, you know, what was it? Twenty five Bitcoin a month. And at the time, Bitcoin was like three thousand. Wow. He said, I said, what, what do you do, man? Like, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he was sure. like, uh, And he was like, yeah, man, I got this website. Uh, he showed me the page. He, he showed me, he said, well, people advertise on this page. It was just a one-page website. Yeah. And at the time, it was the biggest one on the planet. Like, that's how okay. crypto was immature back then. Right, right. And he would charge people 25 Bitcoin just to post uh, also on his page, right? Jeez. So that's how he's making so much money. And uh, and then, but I, I while he was telling me his entire business plan, I said, "Man, this dude could do it. I could do something even yeah, better." Yeah, exactly. So I went back yeah. home and start working. Made a site that was ten times better than that, and we ended up being number three, the third biggest crypto site on the planet, 2017. In wow. the 17, we got an offer to buy from a publicly traded crypto company up in uh, 
in uh, Canada. Uh, we sold it and made a lot of money. Uh, at the time, I didn't have no uh, that many Instagram followers. That was at the time it was national news because it was a big crypto sale. Okay. And um, and then I just you know my followers went from like three hundred to like thirty thousand like in a week. Everybody asked me questions about crypto, investing, business. And I, at the time, I was like, what am I going to do next? And I said, well, I, you know, I, w- I was a teacher in the past, so I could be a teacher again. Right, right. And then uh, I started just talking online and stuff, and it just grew into where we are today. Wow, wow. And so <laughs> so your your, your initial well, – let me go back uh, before I even get into your journey. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you said I want to kind of touch on. But the first thing is me and you talked before we actually got online, and you are part, part Puerto Rican. Yeah. yeah okay. Father. So, so that, that's the first thing I said, okay, we got a lot in common with that. Then you said you played basketball, uh, yeah. specifically in Puerto Rico. What team did you play for? Oh, uh, give me one second. My camera. Yeah. Off. yeah. Oh, no worries. And the reason I, I say that's, that's funny. Cause obviously there's an age difference between you and I, um, uh, this looks like your, your, your camera. Okay. You guys give uh, Armando a moment here as he uh, gets his camera going here. Yeah, sorry about that. No, no, you're good. A second, put it back. There we go. Yeah, there you go. So, so now I'm guessing you're maybe in your 30s, 40s. Yeah, I'm in my, uh, I'm 43. Okay, so so I got I got some years on you. I yeah. used to play. I used to play for the Isabella Gaitos. Oh, I played for uh, I played for uh, Kuamo, and I played for uh, Huma, I mean, Humacao, Kuamo, and I played for Santurce. Oh, so you know my you know yeah. my boys like James Carter, Edwin Pinot, which was one of the the top. Uh, I played in two thousand six and seven. So okay, uh, Edwin Pinot would have been way before you, but he was like on the national team and all those kind of oh, things. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, a couple of guys played on the national team to play with me. I played. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I played about when Barrel was playing. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, he played with. I played with him. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, small world, man. Small yeah. world. Uh, when you start saying, I was like, oh my gosh, it's it's uh, yeah. yeah my family's huge in Puerto Rico. So let, let's get back into yeah. some some of the things. So your initial, um, date, and and I love what you were saying about school because I struggled in high school as well. I was a just a bad kid from <laughs> Bro- Brooklyn, New York, and and yeah. it's funny because when you start talking about how you got to college, it's like something turned on when I realized doing the crap I was doing in high school, wasn't going to get it. And I got into college and I fell in love with, um, you know, certain subjects in college. And, and, um, only one, I only went one year in college and ended up getting a pro contract. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that I got A and B honor roll student as well. So when you're sitting there talking, I was like, what is this deal? Like, <laughs> like my cousin or something? <laughs> your story, your story, yeah, your story, small, yeah. I, yeah. I got a scary story about that as well, but it's funny. Um, I don't tell the story often, but a friend of mine was trying to introduce me to, um, uh, someone he knew, you know, a, a female out there in Puerto Rico. And they was like, Oh, we're going to go to the house. They're having to get together. We go to the, we go to the house and come to find out everybody there was my relatives. <laughs> and I was like, dude, this is, sc-. so my family is huge, spe- specifically like in uh, Isabella, Guayamon, uh, Ponce, Aguadilla, all in those areas, uh, uh, just yeah. massive, especially in Isabella. But anyways, so let's get back into it. So you got into crypto in 2016. Yeah, I got into it in 2011. I Holy I really got wow. serious about investing in 15. Yeah, wow. So your first initial, <laughs> I mean, you were on only you were in a few years after it came. That's yeah, crazy. I got so, I got records. Uh, when Coinbase wow. first opened in 2000, I think it was 13. I was buying Bitcoin, eighty dollars, seventy dollars. Oh and my god! And, stop. And I was stop. And like, and the crazy thing is, about <laughs> it is that at that point, like Coinbase was oh like my PayPal. Gosh. So oh you gosh. could send in, people would send me invoices. Like, like I had a software company too at that time. People were like, oh, here's an invoice for a logo. And I got somewhere I paid 1.8 Bitcoin for a logo and wow. you know, two point something Bitcoin for this. You know, I got a whole bunch of invoices where I show people wow. sometimes. That's like, crazy. Because we saw it like a currency at that time. Very few people saw it as an investment. The Jeez. smart people, I guess, saw it as an investment. But it wasn't that. Wow. When I would go to conferences and we, they would talk about integration in the systems, how it's going to be a payment system. That's all we talked about. Jeez. Uh, it, it evolved over those four years. Now, I got some interesting questions for you then, because, you know, and, and we're going to stick to what we're talking about. But the fact that you got into Bitcoin at eighty dollars and people can't understand while, you know, why XRP is an opportunity at 60 cents, which Bitcoin at one point was less than 60. Uh, we we yeah. ever even heard of a guy who bought it at five cents and no people who were in before yeah. that. Uh, but but no. So let, let's get right into it. So. You got into Bitcoin. Uh, you saw you got you got exposed to crypto in, in eleven. You start taking it serious in fifteen. Obviously, started your own business and was able to sell that. What? Where was the? What was the time in which you saw or or uh, found XRP and said, "Okay, this is something special." So because, I, I remember yeah. in fifteen sixteen, uh, I didn't like XRP at all because uh, 
Because, you know, I was, I was wow. a diehard crypto person, so I felt like it, everything should be decentralized. It should be outside of control of anybody. Uh, there should be not be a corporate structure over it. So for years, I hated XRP. Right, right. right. And I would be online and tell them how bad it was. So <laughs> what really made me like the, like the like XRP is when the SEC opened that lawsuit because I started mm. getting, I got sympathetic because they were being unfairly picked on because they did have that corporate structure. Yeah. SEC can't go after Bitcoin. That's right. right. Nobody knows who don't <laughs> where Satoshi is. <laughs> uh, Ethereum is so you know decentralized; they can't really go after. They get, so they just went down a list and found the, the first one that they could go after, which was right. XRP. And they went after XRP because it's more traditional. It's a structure they can go after. They, they can demand paper from the CFO. They can do this with the C. They, you know they know how to handle that. So as they were fighting and fighting and fighting it, it started making making me look, look into XRP more. Because at first I just dismissed it because of the way it was structured. Right. But uh, as I as the, the lawsuit went on, I started like looking into XRP more and like, oh, this is pretty good. I mean, look at the transaction speeds are fast. Oh, maybe that corporate structure didn't the, the very thing that I hated was the corporate structure and how they, they structure everything. Now, now and I, over years, my thinking evolved and I said, well, would a corporation be more comfortable sending money on Ethereum or Bitcoin or XRP where that corporate structure does exist? Right. Then I start thinking like, man, now it makes sense what they were doing. And then I started changing over uh, from hating it to actually liking it a lot. And then uh, I saw an opportunity. I was like, well, it has this much potential, has as much power. It's more as an investor. I like to look at something as unfairly undervalued. Right. Like like if let's say, for example, like with Katrina, right, when the hurricane comes in, right. everything drops because everybody's selling. The it's a point in that drop to where the, the land becomes undervalued because everybody's right. panicking and you can get in there and get things cheap. Uh, if a stock market crash like today, when the stock market crash, all stocks fall. And some of those stocks were unfairly, unfairly fail. So you Big get time. those and they go back up to where they were blown. So XRP has a fair market value, which I believe is severely depressed because of all the, the problems that are circulating around it. Right. So as an investor, I said, well, that's a good opportunity. Get it now. Wait for it to return to its regular value. In 2007 to 2018, January of 18, XRP was $3 and I think uh, almost $4. Well, yeah, 384. Uh, yeah. 384. Uh, and that was Bitcoin was around twenty thousand. Bitcoin now is sixty something, three times right. more in a theory, right. and you know, and uh, XRP is XRP's true value now should be just you know just rising with Bitcoin six, seven, eight dollars. Easy, easy, yeah, easy. And then the technology hasn't changed. There's not a lot of competitors out. The only problem is is the SEC keeps messing with. It. That's right. That's right. No, I agree with you, brother. And and I don't know if you remember. I always use this reference uh, back in the eighties. I don't know what that that puts you kind of young, but. Um, or maybe it was in the nineties, but there was this, this, uh, uh Olympics, um, uh, was it like, uh, figure skating, uh, and, um, uh, this girl, Tanya Harding, I don't know if you remember Tanya oh, Harding, Nancy Kerrigan, and she hired a mugger to hit the girl on the ankle while she was walking, uh, yeah, while they were in Barcelona or something like that. And so the girl couldn't perform so she could jump in this place. And I think that analogy is what I always use with Ethereum, the SEC and, and XRP. They knew it. I said, I always say this, uh, Armando, there's four people, uh, or, or 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 bodies or however you want to say that know what XRP is and the use for it. Us, the retailer, you and I and, and those like us, ripple themselves because you know obviously they understand exactly what it is. Um, uh, the in, institutional investors, that the ones that we see, and I would say the masses of, of, of uh, institutional uh, uh, investors, banks or whatever that we haven't seen, because I think there's a lot more people behind the scenes. And the, the fourth the fourth person or body, if you, you would uh, want to say that, is our U.S. government. They know exactly what XRP was created for. And that's exactly why we've had the things happen uh, the way we have. And I always say, you know, I put out this tweet the other day about our government loving us the way we should be loved. And and obviously that's not the case. And we're, we'll get into that. I actually got a video. I want, I'll show you that in here in just a little bit. So I understand why you were, uh, I'm sorry, attracted to XRP. Um, let's go in a different direction. Um, John Deaton, you've been around this space long enough. You've heard of John Deaton. You've seen some of the things that he's done in representing uh, companies like, you know, Library or even when Coinbase had this uh, situation happen, he jumped over to see what he could do. He got this, uh, the, the representation of the 75,000 XRP holders and all these different things. Uh, the guy stands for justice. He, he comes from nothing. Uh, which is like my background, uh, possibly even yours. You know, he talks about welfare. He talks about struggle. He talks about, you know, all the things that he had to do in order to succeed. Uh, he's running against Elizabeth Warren, obviously, for Senate right now. Uh, what do you think that means for crypto uh, in its entirety? Uh, I mean, uh, I think it's going to take more than one politician winning in order to turn the tides. I mean, you got to remember is that I always tell people this is that politics 
it's it's uh, to me, and I, some people may disagree, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It's it's, it's a big game, right? Is yeah. that they the things that they differ on are small, and then we yeah. they make they make us think that they're big, right? But then they're, they're small, really, compared to the bigger picture. If you look at what they agree on, that's really where the money and the power is at. <laughs> you know, exactly. That's, so that, that's what I'm saying. So I don't think one politician getting in there, the whole structure would have to change in order to that's be right. a crypto friendly environment. But I, right. but I do think it's a good step in the right direction. Right. Yeah. And I agree with you on that. I think I always said win or lose. I think what he represents is hope and the fact of a voice for the people and wanting the truth to come out. And so you're right. It takes a whole lot. It's like having a president that we really want in. You know, we think is end all be all, but it doesn't work that way. He has a lot of people he has to, <laughs> has yeah, to yeah, exactly. answer to. So it doesn't really work that way. But no, I definitely think I agree with you. It's positive uh, overall. Um Let's let's talk about Ripple as a company. You've been around this thing much longer than I have. I got in in 17, much longer than probably many viewers um, and many people that we've had on this show. Um, from what you see with Ripple, would you say, uh, based off of the thing, things that you've seen, and there's a lot that I've seen. I mean, I saw a time where we were traced from 68,000 to 15,000 and some change when the whole FTX thing happened. Everyone started running. Companies were letting go of people. CEOs were getting let go. Banks were uh, for, uh, going out of business. Uh, companies were downsizing. All this chaos was going on, but Ripple kept expanding, kept exactly. growing, kept kept acquiring, kept uh, doing acquisitions, uh, uh, bringing some of the biggest names they on their team. They know what they have, so, man. They know so, where yeah. they're going. And they so my, know what, what the end is. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. So my question to you is, is Ripple a solid company? I think so. I think Ripple as a company, they're, they're, they're planning to go public too. And that's going to uh, really be a tell-all moment uh, is how the market will respond to that. But I think that, uh, I don't know when, uh, I know they're, they're planning it. But I, I just think that they are. I think they are a good company, right? And like I said in the past, I would have been. I would have had a different answer five years ago. Right. I'd probably an answer full of anger. But as I matured <laughs> and as uh, as my mind has matured and I've, I've learned new details, I, right. I just think that there's a place uh, for a legit. Uh, and what I mean by legit, I mean with the proper structure. Uh, and and foundation and, and infrastructure that a re, you know regular corporation has uh, is a place for that in crypto I think right. and I think Ripple could be uh, the, like the number one go to person right uh, in that no I agree with you wholeheartedly now the, my next question will be this and and you kind of talked about price suppression you kind of talked about uh, things that's kind of kept the price down I I agree with you wholeheartedly that we should be seeing a a six to eight dollar XRP at the least, if it wasn't for the things yeah. that have been done against that company. When you look at Ethereum shooting from dollars to you know three or four grand, and and and, and Bitcoin at the time that you got in was probably hundreds to you know uh, uh you know uh, seventy thousand and all these different things. So, where do you see? And again, this is not financial advice, Armando. Where do you see from your personal opinion, XRP in the short term? And that's predicated off of, off of retail people like you and I, or in the long term, once they're embraced by use of, uh, institutional adoption, which is what they've created for. What do you see it? Uh, I think like short term, we could be at, um, I really think we can be, uh, I think five to six dollars uh, short term. Long term, I, I can see it going over 20. And uh, the thing about it is a lot of people will argue that with me because what happens, they'll say, well, if XRP is at $20, that puts us at a market cap above Ethereum or above Bitcoin. All right, we're, we're, you have to be able to think along a longer timeline. I mean, at this point, Bitcoin is going to be maybe close to a million. At this point, Ethereum is going to be twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. Right. In that environment, XR a twenty dollar XRP or a thirty dollar XP fits right into that. It'd be third right. or fourth on the list. That's right. That's right. Now that's brilliant. That's brilliant what you're saying, and I think the way you spaced that out. If we had a million dollar uh, Bitcoin, I, I would expect nothing less than you know somewhere around, especially. And I think the likelihood of that happening, because you're looking at XRP uh, in, in a suppression as far as price and the things that the SEC has done and caused is almost like a spring, right? It's like a loaded spring that that once it and, and really all we're looking for is just fair game. Obviously, uh, we want it to just be treated fairly, but you're, you're trying to get clarity just so you can function in the way that you were created. And uh, I think one of the things that will obviously help that is the fact that it seems like the thing that you know, uh, was horrific at one point, maybe the biggest opportunity, if not blessing uh, in this whole, uh, you know, and I don't get too much into the spiritual part, but I just mean that by saying once this clarity is done, and, and we'll talk about some of this stuff in, in a minute, that it gives XRP from where it was a disadvantage to an advantage because it's the only crypto with legal clarity at that point. Uh, so I think it'd be huge in, in the fact that, like you said, if Bitcoin starts up to the upside, it, it will allow that spring to pop and, and, and maybe return to where it should be. So. Um, 
but in saying that, I want to ask you this. Uh, we talked about short and ter- uh, uh, long term. You've been around from day one, brother. I got a lot of respect for you uh, for that. But I also understand that you've gone through a lot. And it takes it yeah. takes a certain kind of person because I can even hear it in your demeanor. I can hear it in your tone. You know, I'm, I consider myself a master of what I do. And that's reading people. I can tell that with all the belief and all the uh, uh, um uh, amazing uh, um, skill sets that you have. There's also a certain amount of frustration. You, you, you've you been through the thick and then you've seen it at $3. Yeah. You've seen it come down. And I try to remind, I was talking about one of my, I would consider my best friend, Mike Owens. I was talking to him this morning about the fact that I, I don't know why people don't think, you know, if, if we can go from $3 and 80 something cents down to, you know, 15 cents exactly. that, you know, that we can't have a, a retracement and, and, and that's predicated off a lot of different things. I, we'll get into that in a minute. As far as globally, what we're dealing with, you got crises everywhere you got. And, and just like in the, in the dot-com era, we haven't had a crypto bubble pop yet. I mean, we had FTX and some things like that, but I'm talking about like in the dot-com era, they had a bubble pop where everything was, it was like a great reset in order for things to rise above and shine. I think the Phoenix, or should I say XRP will rise once we have that that pop. And I think that's that's uh, some time coming. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, I, I think that uh, like like Bitcoin has had some pretty strong retra- uh, retractions, but it's always happened almost uh, on time with the 18 months after the having it normally happens. It's almost predictable. Yeah. There's been no unexpected bubble part bubble right. burst, right? That's right. Uh, and that's and that's that there hasn't been any so far. Uh, it's, it's almost Bitcoin has almost moved exactly as expected to the last 12 years, yeah. 13 years. Um, because of the having, the having is predictable. You know what's going to happen. You know people right. are going to overbuy it, and it retracts and returns to the mean. I mean that's 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 normal. That's right. But uh, but I don't know if I don't think XRP needs something like that to happen in order to survive. I think all XRP needs is for the government to leave them alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. Uh, just let them just do whatever they they do do best. Right. Let them flourish and just right. clear the path and let them do whatever you know. That that's what they need really more than yeah. anything else. No. Uh, because they, it's like it's like giving somebody a clear glass of water and giving them a dirty glass. You don't have to convince them. <laughs> they're gonna be best. You know, they're gonna pick the clean glass. That's right. So that's the same with the XRP. If you let them, let the let the uh, the public make the decision. That's over right. time, they'll win. Yeah, and, no, I, yeah, I agree with you. The, the, the one of the things I don't think XRP needs a retracement. Uh, I believe that. It's inevitable. And I don't mean with XRP. I just mean with the market, with the fact that all the stuff that's going on globally, um, you got, you got uh, you know, this Ethereum uh, ETH gate deal going on. Uh, you've got a lot of things that haven't been answered. And, and uh, many people who've been around, and I don't know if you feel the same way, a lot of people feel that 90% of the cryptos that are out there won't even be around long term. You know, and 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 you know, a lot I of mean, times, that's been the case so far. Like ninety yeah. percent are gone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and I think what happens is is once all that regulatory clarity sits in, because look at Library, it was actually a legit great company, but couldn't survive the storm. And so I just think a lot of companies uh, may not be able to su- survive the storm. But one of the things that I wanted to bring up uh, in your journey um, is there's a lot of people that are frustrated right now, Armando, in, uh, especially in the XRP community, a lot of people you see, as soon as something happens, good or bad, they freak out. You know, if, if it's something negative, like an appeal, they freak out. If it's something positive, like a stable coin, they freak out. And I think at the end of the day, they're just upset because let's be honest, brother, you've been around for a while. It's, it's, somebody put a post on uh, X the other day. It said, uh, I think he, you know, he was being, he, he used a lot of like, um, comical, almost like dry humor when it comes to XRP. And I think it's just because he's been through some storms. His name is Rob. And he put down, the, he put in a DeLorean from the uh, Back to the Future. And he says something along the lines of, if I could get back in the time machine and go back to 2017 and tell everybody XRP is going to be in the same price, people would be amazed. So basically what he's saying is that XRP a few days ago was 40 something cents and in 17 was 40 something cents. So I think where a lot of people are frustrated uh, are the fact that they, um, uh, I don't. I wouldn't be frustrated. I mean, I'm sorry to cut you off. You mind if I? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. The thing about the thing that makes me not frustrated with XRP at all mm-hmm. is because I mean, you got to remember the, the 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 price of an asset, regardless if it's crypto, or house, stock, it don't matter. Is based on supply and demand, right? right? If we remove the pathways of demand, then the price drops or stay right. or doesn't go up. Right. XRP is when every major exchange does not allow you to sell, buy and sell XRP. That's the pathways of the demand. So right. if we take those off, of course, it's going to be stagnant. Right. And the reason why those pathways were removed is because of the government. That's so right. once all of that is removed, XRP will naturally move back up. So uh, the reason I thought that after uh, I think that after they settle with the, the, the SEC and it's a finalized uh 
you know, answer to all of this. Right. Coinbase will relist. And if Coinbase relist, that's most of the demand. I mean, if Coinbase is a leader, so all the other changes will relist. And then we'll see XRP rise quickly back to what the price it should be. I, I, like I always tell you, I said, it'll be overnight. It'll be hovering around 56, maybe even a dollar by then. And as soon as these things happen, they're going to happen rapidly. And then overnight, seven a week or two later, it's going to be back up to the regular price where it's supposed to be. You know, at the time, it's yeah. about $8, set between 5 and $8. That's where it's supposed to be. Right. So just, on, just based on this ratio to Bitcoin. It, right. it, for all of XRP's life lifespan, it was a it almost had a clear ratio. It went up with the market, right. and it's been held down. It's like a spring. If you push a spring down, it has to, you know, release that energy somewhere. And XRP will release the energy as soon as all of this is over. Yeah, I agree with you. It's, it's always been able to also stay in the top ten, no matter what. Most most of the time, within the sixth and seventh spot, which is where it's at right now. So, no, I definitely appreciate it, and I definitely uh, uh, can agree with that. I don't know who keeps trying to jump on our deal here, but I just uh, <laughs> keep banning them all. Let's move on. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't talking. I meant um, I meant the other exchanges. I didn't mean Coinbase. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No I mean worries. other major exchanges. They yeah, still yeah. don't. They don't still don't list them. It's, it's on Coinbase. Yeah. But the other exchanges don't have it on there. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Hey, Bitcoin.com, it's not listed on Bitcoin.com. So all the major exchanges do not have uh, XRP uh, on their exchange. So it's it's still a, it's a, it's a demand. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you big time. Um, how important, I don't know if you follow this at all, but how important would you say the documentary uh, that's being created right now by Fruition Productions uh, in telling the uh, XRP story, uh, XRP Unleashed and also ETHGATE, how important um, is that documentary for crypto? Um, uh, it depends on how many people watch. I mean, like, when is it? When is the release date? Uh, they're working on that now. They they are still actually filming. They're still doing interviews. They're they're looking to pitch it to uh, Netflix, I I believe, and it's supposed to be like a six part series. So um, it, yeah. it, the thing about it is that the thing about crypto, man, is that like you said, you say you, you said some frustration stuff in my voice, and the re and, and it, it it humbles you too. Is that right? Because crypto has such extremes from the top to the bottom, not only in price, but in enthusiasm, respect that people in the industry receive. All that happens like like when Bitcoin's going up, people treat me like, you know, like a like, you know, I get treated when it's down. I almost get treated like a scam artist. <laughs> like, you know? like I, I go in yeah. depression sometimes. That's, like, that's I'm like well, well, you know, like so it's and it's been like this for ever since I've you know started. Like, yeah, you, you talk about crypto in the down market. Oh, come on, that scam. People just roll their eyes, and then you talk about it in the up cycles. They'll yeah. watch you like you're a priest, like, yeah. <laughs> just like writing everything down. And that those are extremes. Right, right. And I'm sure right. some of you guys listening have been through that. Yeah. Those are the extremes of this market. So uh, yeah. they would have to release that documentary at, close when the market's going up. Maybe in six months from now, maybe a year from now, when the market's on its upswing, they would have to release it when the tension's there and the euphoria is there. Right. And that will help. And now, if they release it once it starts dropping, nobody's going to watch it. That's so right. uh, they have they have a short window in which they have to release it. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And, and I think one of the things that I think is is also pretty relevant. And by the way, Armando, we've been on for uh, 20 something minutes. We've got over eleven hundred live uh, uh, viewers, both on X and, uh, and uh, YouTube. So that's huge. I definitely appreciate all you guys that are tuning in. So, you know, you said something very, very important. And I think the cool thing about the documentary is that it's relevant. And the reason that is relevant is it's talking about XRP Unleashed is telling that story. And it's also talking about one of the biggest scandals ever, uh, especially in a space which is ETHGATE. Uh, and so I think because of that being so relevant, I think they had a perfect time uh, as they wrap up uh, and, uh, and finish up the project. I think it's going to be absolutely incredible. Um, the next thing I want to talk about um, and um, is let's talk about the timing of um at the SEC talking uh, now, now all of a sudden wanting to say that ETH is a security. Um, you know, it's funny because I know like, like me, you've watched a lot of these congressional hearings where Gary Gensler just seemed to always ignore the questions. Uh, he couldn't answer, you know, whether Ethereum was a security. He couldn't answer whether or not, uh, you know, uh, why did they give him a free pass? And all of a sudden now he wants to say ETH is a security. And the only thing I could conclude, and I want to hear your perspective, is that they get in a lot of pressure to approve the, the, the Ethereum ETF. And so they want to give a falsified sense of justice. Like, okay, well, now we're going to go in and call it. Well, you let the beast get too big. You let the monster grow so big that I think, in my personal opinion, Armando, I think it's like FTX and Sam Bankman Free, right? And that's what makes me not really believe that we're going to have the kind of justice maybe we deserve. Because 
with FTX, a guy serving 25 years. Some people think that wasn't enough. He might do half the time. Uh, if he cuts some kind of backdoor deal, he might even serve half that time. So five to seven, let's say. But one of the biggest parts of that case, which is who got the money from a political standpoint. They threw out. They dismissed it. They yeah, didn't want yeah, anyone to know. Yeah. And so so it just makes me realize we're in a system that's not always created uh, to give justice equally. So uh, um, what do you? why do you think the SEC now says Ethereum is a security? What is, what is the, the, the thought process behind that? Uh, like uh, the thing about Ethereum is not, I mean, it's not a security at all. Like they're going to lose that case. But uh, it's two things that could be happening. Is that, uh, you know, all these things are a huge, huge uh, threat uh, to the U.S. government's dollar, right? So, and, and a lot of the U.S. government's power. So, of course, they're going to go after. But I think the second thing is that, uh, remember, the government, and I, I'm, I'm going to go into some conspiracy stuff here, so stay with me. Okay, but it's no, not actually ahead. a conspiracy. It's actually yeah. real. Yeah, go uh, ahead. The government, and we know that the corporations, uh, banks, elite and rich, they give money to, we all know they give money to politicians. Now, why do they do that? Because they want control. They want to be able to call up a politician and get something done or get something moved or get action taken. Facts. Uh, so I think what's happening, I think, is that Ethereum ETFs coming up. Um, and they, if you look at back when the Bitcoin Ethereum was released in January, same thing happened right around by, about a month before they started saying, oh, Bitcoin, this big, it's not going to get approved. The yep. media was involved and everybody started getting scared. Then it was approved like all of a sudden out of nowhere. They got a lot uh, of there was even a... <laughs> that was even on SEC thing to where the SEC uh, was hacked and it went out a week before. If you remember yeah. that, they yeah. wasn't hacked. Yeah. That was that's why they already had that plan. They just maybe put the wrong date on it or something. Right. But uh, then a week later, they, you know, it came out and said it was. I think it was three days after that. Uh, so I think with the Ethereum ETF, I think it's coming. I think they can't stop it. But I think that they're coming up with these light cases and stuff to push the market down because remember. Uh, that gives the banks and all these, these organizations, institutional investors, that gives them room to acquire, to accumulate uh, before the price. Ethereum should be higher than it is now, but they, now they can accumulate around $3,000. And then once it gets released, that's when they make their money. I right. think it's just a way to depress the market, uh, yeah. leading into the approval of the ETF, because they have to accumulate before they have the ETA, ETF. Yeah, and it's funny how you said that because not only did they deem Ethereum a security, they come right after that and hit one of the biggest Ethereum base uh, <laughs> platforms that a lot of people use, which is Uniswap. And it's like what? Yeah, like, like, so, so if you, if you look at those two things together, it what you're saying makes a whole lot of sense in in that in that uh, uh, analogy. They're, so, they're not going to win those. Uh, it's, no, if they can no. beat XRP, which is uh, the the most corporate crypto there is they're not going to beat any other crypto it's just oh. a waste of the taxpayers dollars exactly and you know who said that better than, uh, said that faster than anyone else what you just said brad garland else he says i don't yeah. think they're going to win that so so i mean you got a guy who would have every, every reason to want something but he says no in all fairness uh he doesn't think that's going to happen uh the next thing that i want to ask you um this $2 billion request is it, it, it's ridiculous, it's stupid, but in the same aspect, again, me coming from a business background, I understand the strategy. Hey, if I really want a certain number, I ask something very you know, ridiculous so I can get to the number yeah. that I want. You know, so, so, you know, and then the timing, uh, Armando, I want you to talk about both those things. Number one is why $2 billion, which I have my own uh, idea about that, which I kind of share. And number two is um, why now? And what I mean by that is if you ask for any dollar amount, that tells me that you're ready to, to settle. If you're asking, yeah. because look, if Ripple's okay, two billion, it's over. But Ripple's not going to do that. So the talks has started. And and if there's, I'm not a guy who shills. I'm not a guy who throws out a lot of numbers. I'm not a guy who talks about certain things. But what I can say right now, uh, uh, with, in my opinion, is I feel like a settlement's coming because they asked for something. Your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think the uh, the I don't think they're going to get. Not going to get two billion, but I think no. that there, it was a the ask was enough to. To kind of like uh like wound them so they'll be weaker going forward. That's a lot of money. If they have to yeah. spend two billion, I mean that's gonna put them back a year or two. You know. Yeah. Easy. The, I think that's why the amount was so big, uh, just because they 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 want to force it. They either, if they can't win the case, they want to at least wound them a little bit going forward. Uh, I mean, yeah, you gotta remember. Uh, this is I don't want to get myself caught up with the government, but <laughs> you gotta remember the yeah. government. That's why we have to restrict power on the government because. Government is made up of individuals. And individuals have emotions, feelings, and they get their feelings hurt and they got to prove stuff. And that's yeah. the reason why government power should be restricted because just because they, they have a, instead of working somewhere else, they work for the U.S. government doesn't mean they're not going to have those feelings. So that's I right. think that the SEC is, is like, you know, like when you play, when they play Monopoly as a kid, 
And uh, like me and my cousin used to play and then, right. One of my cousins, but before he was about to lose, he just flipped the board. <laughs> And nobody, if I can't win, nobody's gonna win. And I, SA, 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 SEC is like they're, they're a sore yeah. loser, so it's yeah. like we can't win the case outright, so let's try yeah. to hurt them as much as we can. Yeah, two billion dollars. You're yeah. like, come on, man, you know that's that, that's that's ridiculous, ridiculous. You know? Yeah, it, but I think that's more because it's because they're hurt, they're mad, they're angry. The SEC is actually losing right. power as yeah. crypto gains more power. So yeah. it's a lot. A lot of that's in that too, uh, yeah. and I think uh, I think the SEC has too much power. They shouldn't be able to do this. Uh, do this to a company. They should only go out. You know how many people are doing security frauds in the world? It's 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 enough to keep them busy for ten years. They should be going yeah. after those people. This this is about, and I, you hit it right on the, the head on the nail, and uh, the nail on the head, and, that, and this is one of those things that it's it's about uh, control, uh, and I think that comes up from a higher higher power than the SEC. It's about money. Uh, because we obviously see that they've, uh, you know, lost, and and uh, and and it's also about the fact that their credibility has been damaged. Once revered as the protector of all and, and doing the right thing, now they just become an embarrassment, a laughing stock. Uh, they've even got the judicial system now saying that they're uh, uh, basically liars and uh, unethical and a lot of stuff, overreaching and all kinds of things. So I want to I want to play this. Uh, this I got this. Um, uh, let's see which one it is. It's actually going to be this one here. Let's see if I can find it here. It's something I put out about um, what I feel. Uh, God, I got too many damn things open. Let's see if I can find it. But it, it's uh, about uh, specifically that if I can actually find it here. And that is uh, being in a country that doesn't seem to always show the love and support that we deserve. And then we'll, we'll get back to it. I'll show this real quick. Um, America. You know, it's it sometimes uh, it, over the last, um, I don't know how many years. I'm not saying I'm not proud, but it's hard to kind of make that statement that you, you're proud to be an American, even though, you know, we embrace our country, we love our country. It just doesn't seem like sometimes our country loves us back. Um, and when you're dealing with digital assets or cryptocurrency, a lot of times, you know, I always say it's a representation of something that allows people to dream again. You know, so many of us, you know, when we were young, we dreamt about this, you, a musician, some people weren't able to live out those dreams. Maybe they had a child, maybe they had a circumstance, whatever it is. And crypto is to me, the very definition of dreaming again. But unfortunately, it seems like we're in a in a country that cares more about their agenda um, and, uh, you know, keeping people in this matrix where, you know, you do just enough not to get fired. They pay you just enough so you can retire on just enough or barely got you buying a, a percentage or barely got you buying in the first place. It's just a horrific uh, uh, matrix. And I like to, you know, I, I don't talk about racism. I think just as Americans, it's, it's, it's a it's a slave driven system. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of how I feel, you know, uh, when it comes to because, you know, Obviously, America is not the, the, the end all be all, but it does play a huge factor in, uh, you know, with the regulatory clarity and things that we need to see done. And uh, I just think is, you know, they use FTX situation. They use a lot of this chaos to really care their own agenda, their own. Uh, uh, I always call it a corrupted game of chess. Right. They're moving in uh, certain pieces in a certain way. And it's not that, like you said earlier, it's not that they're going to win because they've lost more than they've ever won. But it's just a way to disrupt and cause chaos and Makes really ki and really kill hope because you got to think yeah. about every time we get to a point Armando where it seems like we're getting to something positive they always throw a curveball and, yeah. and now now we're sitting around scratching our head going wait a minute Ethereum is a security what Uniswap like they do everything they can to keep messing with the, the the fact that you know this thing could you know go into a positive direction and change a lot of people's lives but at the end of the day it's not about the the people it's about the agenda so uh, yeah. your comments on that. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, it's, it's like, like, like I said before, if they can't stop it, they're gonna hurt it. They can't hurt it. Like they can't get it one way. They're gonna get it another way through, you know, through enthusiasm, right? Is that you yeah. can kill a project, especially in crypto, and just make the community just give up. And uh, right. just, and I said this about two years ago. I said if the government uh, can't win the case, they're gonna draw it out. And if you draw it out, it's two two things from that is that you'll you'll kill the community. People will eventually, people just don't have the. The, uh, w they can't stand, you know, that much frustration, it could, you know, over a longer period of time. So some people right. will quit. And two is that you hope to bankrupt your target. Uh, that's a, that's a strategy and that's a legal strategy that's been practiced for hundreds of years is that if you have more money than the person you're going to just, just burn them out, you know, and, and the, remember the U S government has unlimited money, not really, but they do, you know, not technically, but but compared to us, they have unlimited budgets, you know. Yeah. So uh, even the biggest corporation, they have an unlimited budget because they just can draw from the tax coffers. Yeah. So um, 
So that that's what I'm saying is that um the, so they'll just try to bankrupt them or or cause the uh, enthusiasm in the community to go down. That's the the third, second, and third way they're going to try to ruin them. But if we able to get through all of this, which I think we will be able to, yep. uh, XRP has a bright future, and I'm not I'm not going to come off that hill either because I I really believe it. That's right, and I and I I, uh, I second that. So also, I'm going to ask you guys to do me a huge favor as we get ready to wrap this up. We got some more questions for Armando. Go over to Armando's X page. It's going to be at tall guy i'm sorry at underscore tall guy tycoon follow my brother uh, armando brilliant mind knows what he's talking about a lot of credibility in this space and uh uh, definitely go out and and, uh, check out his page also i want you guys to go over to if you hit the link on his x page it will actually take you over to um his uh link tree here where you can see armando you can you can reach out to him on uh looks like youtube you can get him on uh, instagram you can get him on um tiktok x and it has all his links here, guys, so you can stay connected to uh, this guy and his uh, all the things that he's um, out there uh, doing for the community. So appreciate you in a major way, brother. Let's keep this thing Thank going you. here. What do you, what do, well. Yes, sir. What do, you, what do you see crypto as a whole, Armando? You know, you see people like um, Kathy Wood at ARK Investment throwing these crazy numbers, 1.6 you know, million by uh, 2030. You see uh, Michael Saylor, oh, it could go a lot higher than that. And 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 there's been predictions out there, my friend, with, you know, like uh, by a uh, uh, Val Hill uh, Capital that said XRP could be anywhere from twenty five to thirty five thousand. Uh, you see, uh, Ripple said in order for it to work, Joe Cass is in order for it to work the way it was created, ten thousand. And I would say, you know, if, if they only got that ten percent right at a thousand bucks or twenty twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred, or if they got it one percent right, a hundred bucks to two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty dollars, it's still a life changing opportunity. If even if that happened by twenty thirty, where do you see crypto in the next five years, my friend? With some of those predictions out there? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can see Bitcoin reaching a million. Uh, and and what, what's going to happen? The re- the way we're going to get there is that through this cycle, I, I think the top in this cycle could be two fifty to three fifty. There's be a drawdown. Uh, twenty two thousand twenty. Uh, well, 2028 is when we'll see it pass a million. So now between 28 and uh and 30, 32, right around it could be 30, 2030. Uh, uh, so right around there we'll see it pass a million. But uh, and and the way we're gonna do that is that Bitcoin uh, just like a stock split, right? Is that the reason why when a, when a stock gets too expensive they have to split it because right. the normal uh, most people can't uh, comprehend big numbers. You know, so once a stock reaches a thousand, two thousand, the, the actually the demand starts to go down because a lot of people feel like they're priced out, even though right. it's, it doesn't matter. You know, it, with the price, we're going to percentages. But uh, so Bitcoin will have to be denominated in a lower amount. Micro right. Bitcoin, Satoshi, something it have to be. Uh, uh, it have to be denominated a lower amount, or, or or the average person will be priced out. And we all know you can buy it fractional. I mean, right. we know that, but most people, if you ask, you ask average people about, oh, I can't afford that. It's a mental thing. It's not a, yeah. it's not a technical thing. It's yeah. a mental thing. They yeah. see the price too high. They're going to feel like they're priced out. All, all I can get is like 0.01. It's not even worth it, even though it is still worth it, but that's what they'll see it as. So you have to denominate it lower so people would feel like that. And it won't be, it'd be more useful like that. So I think that's what's really going to drive Bitcoin to a million dollars is the denomination being yeah. a lower amount. Yeah, and I think a lot of it's going to come at this point from uh, the institute. Or, uh, or, yes. or the, yeah, go ahead. Yes, this crazy dude said a Bitcoin is backed by belief. I mean, that's everything. Gold's backed by belief. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what what is it? I got a silver bar right here. I'm playing with here. What is this? Uh, it's a ten ounce silver bar. What is this backed by? It's just a hunk of metal. It's yeah. back because you believe it's go. That's it's right, worse right. than I can go sell it. Right. So that's the reason why. Uh, well, anything's worth anything. It's mass belief. Yeah. So we that's all right. agreed on in one way or another that this is worth this. That's so right. Bitcoin's no different. Right. Yeah. That no. That's a fact. If, if we if we put value on. Uh, a Chuck E. Cheese token that said that was worth a million bucks. Yeah, enough. You go, yeah it, it, it's, it's no, I definitely agree with you wholeheartedly on that. Um, you know, I guess my my next thing would be, um, and you made a, you made a very good point. Uh, but for me, one of the issues that I, first of all, I think that Bitcoin, there's a lot of businesses that are coming, a lot of in, not institutions to the extent of what what uh, you know, as far as utility and XRP, but companies like your Michael Sellers, a lot of people trying to hedge. Uh, um, you know, and have and, and and have Bitcoin on their books versus the dollar, right? So I think uh, you know they they call it digital gold. Uh, I just I think my problem is Armando is when I see some of these influencers say, uh, and these are because look, I've been in crypto since seventeen. I started my show thirteen months ago, and one of the things that made me start my show was influencers not taking uh, credibility for some of the things they would say, right? Not take not taking should I say responsibility? Um, and what happens? You'll get influencers that are maxis that go out there and say, okay, well look. You know, if you got money, go out there and buy yourself 
0.1 Bitcoin. And I'm like, what? I'm like, there's so many more coins that have, that have greater potential. Like that, that moment might have been when Armando got in. Or maybe it was back during that time from 11 when you first saw it up until maybe 16, 17. But to tell someone to take, let's say, 10,000 and go buy 0.1 Bitcoin, I don't think is very responsible. Not not to the point where you've got assets like XRP, XLM, XDC, SHX. you got coins that, 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 that their moments haven't came yet. And so I just think that we have to be careful when we're going around there telling people, you know, uh, uh, to do this and that. And then you look at some of these guys, look, I'm, I'm trying to be as, as, as nice as I possibly can here, because obviously you have a lot of credibility in who you are and what you've done. But and I don't know if you feel this way or not, but I see a lot of guys that are in their 20s that get on YouTube and maybe last year they were at McDonald's and this year they're telling people what to do with their money. I just, it, it, there's just that, no, that, that, that drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. Uh, and, and, and what even drives me more is that the retail investors can't see the difference. Yeah. Yeah. A, a, a <laughs> guy coming on in, his page, you want to talk about it during the bear market. He's, he's not valid. That's it. You know, you got guys coming in and saying, Oh, go buy Chicago coin. Cause it's got 15 zeros. In the, and I'm like, and these people, they buy into it because they don't know. And, that, and that's where mm -hmm. we have to we have to change things, Armando. We have to – and I don't mean you and I. I'm talking about the guy who, um, who's so used to doing things, being told to do things or follow what everybody else says. That's what got you in the position you're in now. If you want things to change, you have to change. If you want things to get better, you've got to get better. You can't come in with that employee mindset and try to create a multi-million dollar opportunity with crypto. Things have got to change, and and may, maybe that's your your work ethic. Maybe that's doing your research. Maybe that's whatever it is. The research. Your your comment research. on that. If you're if you're talking to people out there who are sitting around frustrated about because I get it all the time. I see it right here in our chat now. What should I do? What you know? What's the next move? And I'm just, I, and I and I said this yesterday on my or, or a couple of days ago on my show. I said if you're asking if you got to ask me and Armando what to do, you shouldn't be in crypto. You need to go back and start doing your research. Uh, and that's the first step. Go ahead, Armando. Yeah, you know, what I always say, I say, you don't trust anybody, including me. Like, you got to remember is that people are, you have to understand how this market works. Uh, people are paid off to say stuff. And and I won't take, I, I've only taken money from one company, and that's Proppy. And I'm currently under contract with them. And the only reason I took money from them because I was talking about them way before, and I really believe in that company. Uh, that's the reason. But I've never, I've, I've been offered probably one and a half to two million dollars over the last four years to shill cryptos. And that's mm -hmm. something I just won't do. Like, it, it let's, you know, something I'm already believing. Yeah, I would because well, who wouldn't do that? But yeah. I was already talking about it. But uh, but other than that, I won't take any money. But a lot of people will. They'll take every offer that comes into that. Like, you got to remember, these people have a new video app every week about a new a crypto that's going to do well. Yeah, you know why? Because they get money every week to oh, do a video on this, do a positive yeah. video on this. So they're just raking in the money and whatever happens to you, they don't care. Yeah. Uh, and that's what you have to understand about it. Especially a 20 year old don't know what they're doing. Uh, you have to remember crypto is just like anything else. It takes time to become good or an expert at it. It's not, you can't just jump into it. And another thing people gets me, gets me messed up is that just because a person has made money in something does not mean they're an expert. That's that's right. that's, that's, that's the thing people don't realize. Yeah. A person that has made less money could be more of an expert and made a bunch of money because yeah. there's luck involved, right place, right time, a lot of stuff involved. I put, uh, right before the COVID, I put about uh, right around a million dollars in real estate. Since right. then, it's quadrupled. Right. I don't know nothing about real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I just got lucky, put it in at the right time, just made a bunch of money. Yeah, is, yeah. I'm not an expert about real estate. Yeah, just because yeah. I, I go, I made three million in real estate, so now I'm yeah. an expert. No, it's yeah, yeah. not. It just got lucky. I don't yeah. even know why. I can't even tell you why it went up. I just look yeah. at it going. Yes, it all went up. <laughs> You know, I love your, I love your, uh, uh, your real, uh, realism and, and, and being authentic because it's funny. You said that my mother-in-law and my wife are both watching this right now. They're downstairs. Um, and before I got on the show, we were downstairs and I was, it's funny because you say things that I can, res I can relate to and resonate with. Uh, I was just telling my wife, my show has exploded. My, my YouTube, my, my, uh, my ex, because of some of the interviews and some of the things that I'm doing. Um, and again, we've only been out 13 months, but, I'm getting a overwhelming request from companies that want to pay me. I had one company say, every time you do a video, we'll give you a million of our coins. I had another company say, name your price. Yeah. I've got yeah. right now, God is my witness on everything I love. I've got about 10 messages of companies wanting to wanting me to shield their product okay. for, a, for, for a dollar. I know you have. That's what, what you got to remember. Yeah. It's like and, and you get people don't realize how much money's involved because yeah, a lot. Like, for example, they'll give it to him. Uh, they'll give him 
$50,000 in their token, which is ridiculous to do one video because it don't matter to them. They got tokens just sitting around, you know, mm -hmm. they can, mm -hmm. you know, so they give him $50,000. He does one, pushes the token up to, you know, 50%. Now he's at 75,000. He sells and that's the end of, you know, and then the, the consumer gets dumped on. Then they, the, the token crashes. Now remember, it's not just you. It's they got 15 well, influencers they paid uh, Armando, to. Armando, look yeah. at that. You see that yeah. right there? So, yeah. so when I get offline, I'm going to send you. See that number? Yeah. I'm going to send you. I'm not going to do it because uh, I don't want to blast the company, but I'm going to send you one of the company's messages to me. And it's at four cents, and they'll give me a million per video. A million yeah. coins per video. That's $40,000 per video. So you're not lying, brother, when you said what you just yeah. said. And I was downstairs telling my wife, I said, look, my, 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 <laughs> who I am and my integrity is not for sale. Uh, because number one is I don't know any of these companies. Number two is... I don't want to be responsible. See, one of the great things about me is I've never had to go back and apologize to, to, to almost anyone, right? Unless it's something right. I couldn't control. I don't want to be the kind of person that I'm making 40,000 a video and then I got to go back and I just, I just, I just destroyed everything I've been working for, for exactly. some money. Everything I've been working. Also, yeah, remember the, the end, end user who's going to lose their money. You oh, man. sleep with yourself and live with sleep. Them, for, you know, forever. That, and that's what people are like. People who are looking at this, I probably got some people right now calling me an idiot. I probably got some people telling me that I'm stupid, but but it's because you have short term thinking. And like you said, yeah, I've exactly got. I was thinking. I've got to live with with the fact that uh, uh, John Doe just put in money because he trusted six eight J, and and it goes beyond John Doe. What about his child? What about his wife? What about their household? Like and and uh, I was doing a show the other day, my friend with. Um, Mike O, uh, my, my one of my best friends, and uh, it had uh, we had um, a couple other people on there, uh, Alaskan, um, Alaskan uh, Squeeze, and also Frankie Legend. And I was talking about you're an influencer, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make this statement, and you can. And this is totally away from our questions. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten calls from people if they're not asking for advice, um, or grown people who've lost everything. They went out and took mortgages on their home. They sold their car. They've done. They've taken loans out that their wives didn't know about. I've I've gotten calls. So invest in crypto. Yeah, that, that I That's literally that, that that I've that I've got off the phone and I went to my wife who's on this stream right now and I said, babe, my heart like it, it's drained me emotionally because I've got grown men crying on the phone. They don't know what to tell their wives. Or they they made yeah. mass mistakes. And so and, and I think a lot of it is because of my background of speaking and, and and the things that I've done. So a lot of people feel like they can do that. Uh, um, and some of these people I've known for some time. But man, look, you got to take responsibility, man. You've got, you know, what what do you say to those people out there? Uh, uh, just just running out buying everything they can and not take and not doing their own research. What do you say to them, Armando? I always say, uh, like I, I'll just re, 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 reiterate here is that don't trust nobody, including me. That's like right. whatever I say something, go make sure what I'm saying is right. You don't, That's you don't know if like, I always say this, this is something I say on my lives. You don't know if I'm drunk, I've been corrupted. Somebody's on off the screen holding a gun to me. Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so make sure whatever I say, go check it out. Then if it, it works out, come up with your own conclusion and make the play. You know that you don't know what's happening, right? You don't know if you know I could have got corrupted yesterday for some reason. You don't know somebody got blackmailing me. Right, you right. don't know, so you have to always check it out. That's right. uh, and that's what to keep you safe most of the time. And along the process of checking it out, you'll learn. So that's another benefit of doing that is that you'll learn along the way. So don't ever. People have actually asked me, uh, especially doing Bitcoin bull runs. Uh, they'll 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 say I'll send you over the username and password to my account, and That's I just right. want you to trade for me. That's First right. of all, I don't day trade crypto, but second of all, I'm like you should never do that ever. Yeah. Mm -mm. You know, ever, that's crazy. And then guess what? You think they're gonna listen and go give it to some other influencer? He's gonna take your money. I wouldn't, but some it's a lot of them out there that will. Right, they'll come yeah. in and clean you out and just say I'm sorry, I lost everything. Yeah. And what I love about what you're saying is how you point the finger, like, don't even trust me. And, and, and when people look at our shows, Armando, the only thing they should be looking at, especially on mine, and, and, and I, I can't speak for you, but I'm just taking from what you're saying, the same for you, is you're going to get the truth. You're going to get the facts. We're not going to shill. We're going to tell it like it is. We're going to give you our truth, but it's up to you to take that information and verify it, validate it, do your own research. We're not, you know, I, I've, I've gone to Armando's side. I've never seen him say, go out and buy Chicago coin or go buy big Clifford, the big red, red dog or, or Smurfette coin and, and these dumb things that are out there. So it's, it's, it's what you get is you're getting credibility uh, when you look at our platforms. And then it's your job, like you said, to validate. It's not that Armando has been bought, but the analogy he's using is don't trust anyone. Um, 
I because don't trust this is my lawyers and accountants. I always <laughs> <just> check them. <laughs> you shouldn't either, really. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's hey, man. You know, it, it's you, you say that, but when you start hearing the stories of Kareem Abdul Jabbar yeah. being, being taken for everything he had by who his accountant, when you hear these stories about Steve Harvey that they almost threw in prison because he thought he was paying his taxes all 10 years and they almost threw him in prison because his, his bookkeeper was, was robbing him blind. And so, yeah, yeah you got, yeah, you can't trust anyone guys. You got to make sure you go out there and do your own research. You know, that's a fact. Um, and I definitely appreciate, uh, you know, that truth, uh, from my man Armando here. So let me get back over because my phone's been going a little bit crazy here. Uh, let, let's, as we finish this out, your thoughts on, uh, strategic long-term wealth, uh, when it comes to XRP, um, just give some insight on that. Yeah, like, like, and another thing too is like anything else. You can't put your trust in any one coin, regardless of how you feel That's about right. it. That's right. Uh, That's right. Is that uh, like, like I feel like I believe in crypto more than I believe in any other asset in my life. But all my money's not in crypto. That's People right. say, why don't you just put it all in crypto? Because yeah. you don't know. I don't know what's coming next year. I don't. There's no way for anybody to know for sure That's right. how this is going to play out. That's right. Now, if it continues to go like it is going, yes, we're going to make a lot of money with crypto. Right. But let's say the government comes. Let's say a war happens. Let's say half the internet goes off. Anything. Think it happens. Let's, let's say quantum computers are created tomorrow and then right. somebody breaks down the entire blockchain. Right. Anything could happen. We don't know. That's you why know. you can't put all your eggs in one basket. But, That's right. um, but let's also say you have to constantly think about that when you do uh when you do long-term wealth building with, with crypto or any other asset. You just have That's to right. make sure you understand how to manage risk along the way. I love As it. you get older, you have to have less risk. That's right. That's right. No, that's that's definitely uh, spot on. Uh, your thoughts on Swift XRP from a from a political standpoint? What do you think? You know, as far as uh, you think, um, yeah, just that's pretty much a question. Uh, from a political standpoint, XRP, uh, Swift and XRP. Do you think uh, uh, like yeah. the Swift network? Uh, yeah, a payment system. Yeah. Uh, I think eventually that uh, XRP will be the go-to for a payment system. There's too many banks that already have partnerships. They're obviously building something. That's right. Uh, they're just waiting for all this to uh, to go away. Um, I think that all that stuff will be uh, will come start coming to fruition in, in you know a year next year, maybe hopefully in a few months, but it could be a year. Right. Yeah. No, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, Bricks I uh, only trust the charts. I wouldn't trust the charts 100 percent either because the charts. <laughs> and I'll tell you why because the charts can't. Charts only tell you what's happening now and what happened in the past. It can't predict events. No, like if no. a war, like let's say the war escalates tomorrow, the charts ain't gonna tell you that. No, no. no. <laughs> but I promise yeah. you, the market's gonna drop. You see what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. you can't even trust the charts 100. Mm percent You have to no. constantly practice risk management. I always say TA is great. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's it's predicated off of what you know. Part of it is human emotions. Part of it is you know, Group you know, di di yeah, yeah. Di di different variables. But what happens? You know, you don't think people have certain charts up, and then all of a sudden, COVID hit and Bitcoin tanked to thirty five hundred. I mean, like I it, 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 it changes. You know, the, when they start well, tell you COVID, uh, charts don't tell you COVID's coming. <laughs> no, no, or there's a there's a you know missiles, whatever. We're not gonna get into that. But yeah, it definitely yeah, uh, yeah it gives it gives you a general idea. But at the end of the day, it's not. It's not a one hundred percent. Part of the guarantee. picture. It's a part of the picture. That's right. It's a That's good right. Part of the picture, but it's still part of one. Absolutely. What do, What are your thoughts on um, BRICS, Ripple, and the International Bank of Settlements? How do you think all that's going to play out? If you can give a little insight. Uh, yeah, I think BRICS is probably at the point now where it's going to be unstoppable. Uh, I don't think government U.S. can stop it anymore. I think they've already grown to the past the point of uh, of control. Uh, but but like I said, is that I I think they're going to try to back it by gold. Uh, which will make more sense and maybe cryptocurrency later down the line. But I think there are people will be more comfortable with gold right now. Uh, what was the last part of the question? Uh, just uh, BRICS, Ripple, and the International Bank of Settlements. Uh, like, how do you think, you know, Ripple will play into all that? Yeah, I think eventually, like I said, with the SWIFT system and also with BRICS, uh, XRP will be the number one choice that they're going to choose to, uh, what, what else are you going to pick? I mean, there's no other payment system that has that that corporate structure. that somebody you can get on the phone. It, it, people don't. I, that's another thing. That's what made me really like XRP because I hated it. And then I realized when I worked at a, you know, I worked corporate jobs before. Then I thought about. It, I said, like, how would I worked at AAA? I was a head engineer of the travel system. So I, I imagine myself going and talking to upper management, telling them, hey, we want to integrate this crypto. The first thing they're gonna say is, well, if something going on, who do we call? Is that tech support? <laughs> uh, there's no tech support. It would, it would be hard to convince upper management. Now, XRP has a sort of tech support. That's you know, right. You can call and, and, and you know, so XRP fits right into business uh, operations better than any other coin on earth. 
Yeah. Uh, even if you tell me, well, this coin is cheaper, that coin is cheaper, but it doesn't have the structure and that type of corporate that what corporations need in order to move forward with a cryptocurrency. So, like all of these things, uh, XRP is years ahead of everybody else. No, I agree with you wholeheartedly. As we uh, come to a close of this uh, amazing interview, brother, and I definitely appreciate you and your time. I want to ask you a question that's probably on a lot of people's mind right now, as it seems like everything is, is moving towards that direction. CBDCs, do you see those as good or bad? Uh, I see it as a good thing for cryptocurrency in general, because uh, I because I, eventually, I mean, uh, banks have to people. The general public won't accept cryptocurrency unless it's more, uh, more I guess, uh, standardized, like you know, in, in, a, in a standardized way. Because the average person is not going to trust going to a, a weird exchange and buying a cryptocurrency. So those things are going to help uh, with uh, the per public perception of Bitcoin being a legit asset. Right. Right. So, so I, I appreciate, uh, uh, it looks like kid, uh, K dis clutch 35, uh, 0.1 Bitcoin will be huge in the future. And that's, I'm not, I'm not saying that, uh, what I, what I'm saying, I'm actually going to put that message, but let me, let me, let me do this since, since he brought that up and I like, I like answering questions, uh, sometimes, uh, real time. I'll give you, um, I'll give that person a, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Since you brought that up about Bitcoin, let me see here. Uh, da, 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 where's it at? Uh, that's a good point. Let me see if I can find where that point is at here. Okay, so it might be this one here. Let me let me let me share this one to kind of answer that guy's uh, question on how I feel about that. I think this might be it. I could be wrong, but let's try it out. And I think uh, on the flip end of that, you got all these influencers that are um, um, bulls, or um, I mean, to the point of like uh, overly bullish on Bitcoin. Which is, look, I, I I hold Bitcoin. I've had Bitcoin. I've been dollar cost averaging in Bitcoin since uh, good God, like thirty thirty five hundred dollars or something like that. Um, and, um, you know, so I'm not going to bad mouth it, but I think that that time has passed. I think, you know, when you see some of these influencers that are sitting there saying, if you just got 0 0.1 Bitcoin and then you hold it for the next 20 years, like, really, are you stupid? Like, so you're trying to get people caught up in a dream and you're trying to get people caught up in helping you live your dream It's no different than when you work for someone and you're building their dream right now, if you're getting a Bitcoin, unless you're buying a whole lot, you're building someone else's dreams. They're hoping that you hold that long enough so they can dump on you. And so at the end of the day, you've got to be smarter than that and understand, okay, well, if I got enough money to buy 0 0.5 of a Bitcoin, I might have a better opportunity to put, you know, to invest in something like a SHX, a Velo, a, 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 a XLM, a XRP, uh, whatever the case may be. But I, I definitely uh, don't talk a lot about uh, Bitcoin on my channel because I just don't want people, because a lot of times what happens with people, and again, this is not financial advice, people, um, they feel less than, they feel, they feel inadequate. Uh, and I don't think a lot of influencers understand that, you know, uh, because you're telling them, you know, oh, you should have could or you should do this. And it's like, dude, I can't afford that. And that's, that's what makes people do irrational things like uh, take out loans and, and take out mortgages against their homes because they realize they need a lot of money to follow what a lot of these idiotic influencers are saying. And I hate to say it, but I'm just speaking truth. And so when a person can just go out there and spend a little extra money and get a cool little bag, bag of SHX for what, you know, 100 bucks? you know, a couple few hundred bucks here. So the point I was trying to make with that, for those of you guys that are listening, and I'm not saying having 0 0.1 Bitcoin is bad. If you bought that some time ago, I get it. But for a person to go out there and try to buy a fraction of a Bitcoin for 10 grand, when they can just dollar cost average a few hundred dollars here and there, even, even when you look at, again, and I we're talking a lot about XRP. And again, I'm very well diversified as is Armando. What I'm saying is, is that if there was any reason or any way that XRP could hit a thousand bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever it is, uh, you know, having a a handful or, or a, you know a few dozen or a hundred or, or a thousand at a fraction of the price of what you're telling someone to buy. So I'm not against Bitcoin to be shooting myself in the foot. I'm just saying I'm also one of those kind of people that I'm not going to say, okay, take that ten grand and go buy zero point one. I don't even that that would buy you one at this price. I, I, you know, but the point I'm trying to make is it makes no sense in my opinion. And so I, I'm not going to tell anyone because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just saying if I'm talking from a perspective of where, where they can get more value out of there's amazing even utility uh, coins out there you, you, xlms xdc algo hbar xrp whatever it is and i'm not shilling any of those i do have all of those and there's coins i probably don't got uh, uh there's you know your chain i mean i do have chain link or your polka dots whatever so to tell someone to go out and buy a 0 0.1 i don't know if that's the best advice for the individual person uh themselves uh and that's just my opinion i could be wrong but yeah i mean uh the way i see it is that uh, it's just like you diversify anything else i mean 
I, I, I believe people should own some Bitcoin because some. from what I see, yeah, but I, all of it, it putting all of it, anything is stupid. But yeah, uh, yeah. because I mean, Bitcoin, where we see, we're at 7, 65, 64 today, I guess. I haven't looked at the charts. Right. Let's say we go to 250. That's still a what, five times return, well, four, four and a half time return. I mean, it's right. still significant compared to right. the stock market, anything else. So uh, you still make some money, but you're not going to get rich like that, but you can no. make some money. No. So uh, the way I tell people, and it's, like I said, not financial advice, nothing like that, but I, I tell you what I do is that you got your Bitcoin, Ethereum, you got staples, right? And those are going to go up almost guaranteed, but then you have to take 20, maybe even 30%. And you got to start looking at some other coins, you know, that have a lot more potential yeah. if that's what you want, you know, and, and, and put some in those because even if those fail, your Bitcoin Ethereum is not going to, you know, it'll, it'll make a little bit of gains to cover the losses. But if they do well, you'll make a lot of money. So yeah. you have to keep your eye, especially in crypto at this point, point in the game, you have to open your eyes to these other opportunities. Yeah. Bitcoin maximalists, they, they get on my nerves too, is because the Bitcoin maximalist movement is driven by billionaires who got into their crypto early. And remember, I'm going to tell you why they're Bitcoin maximalists. Because if I got it, let's say I put... 100,000 in Bitcoin in 2012. And I remember a lot of these dudes before they got, you know, real big because I saw them mm -hmm. in a lot of conferences early on. And now you got like 20 billion in Bitcoin. You can never sell your Bitcoin. It's not right. that you're not, you don't believe in other coins. 99% of your wealth is locked in Bitcoin. That's right. And if you sell it, just two things going to happen. You have a tax burden. So you're going to lose 35, 40% of it immediately. Right. So in order to maintain your wealth, you have to be a Bitcoin maximalist. Yep, yep. You see no. what I'm saying? So no. then they go to these conferences, tell everybody all these people, and all the, the the followers and stuff. Oh yeah, this guy said it, so I am too. But that, yeah. that he says it because yeah, it makes sense in his case because right. he he'll, he take a forty percent drawdown as soon as he sells. So yeah, just he's already got twenty billion. What does it matter? In your yeah. case, it's not going to matter. That's right. And, and and again, I'm not saying not to have it, but some of us were very fortunate to get in at a different price, and that's all I'm saying. So I think some of the greatest opportunities out there some of the greatest projects haven't had their moments yet xrp hasn't had his moment yet bitcoin is having his moment now it's had his moment back when they were talking about it you know uh, there's a video uh, of uh, uh you know i don't believe everything <laughs> i'm not gonna i don't believe in everything this guy I'm, uh, how do i say this i don't want to say anything bad but there's a guy by the name of da vinci j who was screaming on youtube to buy a bitcoin at a dollar and that's all i'm saying now now he also sometimes yeah. craps on other coins that i like so i'm not going to say this and that but the fact that he bought bitcoin uh pre-dollar is amazing and so but he had his moment it had his moment i mean the guy's a billionaire so so for me to sit there and go well guys going to get 0 0.1 i just i look at everybody in, especially in my community as family and, and i'm not finding a financial advisor but damn it if you're my family i want you to win and have the greatest opportunity to win i'm not going to tell you not to get it i'm gonna just tell you there's better options in the short and long term. So, anyways, that's 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 that. Um, I love what you said about CBDCs, though, as well. Um, your final thoughts, man, to all those who are watching. Uh, you know, we had uh, as high as a thousand people watching this thing. Um, your final thoughts to the people that are listening. Anything you want to say before we get out of here, my friend? I would just say I think that this uh, this cycle uh, and just you know, XRP is a great opportunity, but there's a lot more opportunities out there as well. This probably will be the last big uh, Bitcoin cycle of your life, and uh, and there's several reasons for that. Uh, because the bank's going to have too much control after this. Uh, secondly, is that too many people are going to understand the having is going to be priced in going forward. Uh, and, and the derivatives are going to go and jump into the market over the next two years. So they're going to slow down some of the volatility, maybe regulations that slows down volatility. Volatility helps the long term adoption of crypt crypto, but it hurts uh, individual success because if, if it, if, if it, because it's going to stop the drawdowns, but it also stops the big movements up. Uh, and that's going to allow people to invest with their 401ks, retirement. You know, it's a lot more stable. But your chance will be gone. You got like, I think you got two years, maybe three, to make as much as you can off crypto. And it, it will be over. This whole thing will be done. It, it won't be like this ever again in your life. This is a 30, once in a 30-year opportunity. Man, if that's not the truth, where can everyone find you at, Armando? I know I, I share yeah. some stuff, but uh, what's, the, what's the book? Uh, the book on Amazon, 17 bucks. You can grab it. It's a bestseller. Uh, what? You can find oh, me. wow. Tall Guy well, Tycoon. Well, hold on. Let's uh, pull those up. Strategic Millionaire. Let me see. Okay, strategic so, Millionaire on Amazon. So, so I can find it. Uh, what? Let me see. Yeah, go to the Strategic Millionaire on Amazon. And okay. what we do, that goes. It, it talks a lot about crypto, but it also talks about techn technology innovations, how to invest in technology. Where crypto is a technology. Where along the cycle, what happens, you know, how emotions are involved, psychology, and all that other stuff. 
Um, and also you can find me anywhere, Tall Guy Tycoon on TikTok, Instagram. Uh, oh, wow, right here. On, on uh, Instagram, on, uh, uh, I forgot, Twitter, X, and everywhere else. So I think this is it, right? Yeah, this is it. So let me pull this up real quick. Let me pull it up. Is it black and red? Uh, let me see where we at. Boom, boom, right there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So you guys go out and, and give my uh, star rating. I'm proud of that. Out of hey man. <laughs> hey man, you guys go out there and, and get my uh, my man's uh, Armando's book, The Strategic Millionaire: um, Seven Laws of Wealth. The rich don't tell you. I love it. Um, I got the XRP logo on the cover. You see it right to the you left. Do. You do. You <laughs> do. I see that. Wow, man. I mean, I didn't even. It's so funny. It's the first time I heard about this book. But I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave this up, guys. Make sure you go uh, follow my brother. Make sure you guys uh, connect with them. Uh, what? Well, just before we get out of here, because I want to promote the book some more. What's some of the things that they'll learn in this book? Uh, like I said, a lot of it's about uh, the technology adoption cycle. Uh, some of it's about mindset. Uh, most of it's about when to invest along that adoption curve, uh, what to look out for, uh, especially like what I focus on a lot is like what the rich do. Like, uh, you know, like like during the last in the Bitcoin before Bitcoin got to where it's at to now, there was a two year like bear market almost in which on the media you saw that Bitcoin was done. It's over. Forget about it. And that's a, that's almost that's a that's planned. And it happens almost in all assets to get you to look away. And that, that's actually a sign that something's about to come back up. Uh, and that's what we talk about a lot in that book, stuff like that. Uh, and that's called accumulation phase. It's actually a name for it. It's accumulation phase. That's when the banks, the leading the rich, accumulating an asset, and they try they have to keep you away because they're putting so much money into the market, they have to keep the prices down. So we talk about all of that stuff. Uh, so it'll make you, it'll give you a, a, a 30,000 view, 30, foot view of how markets work. And you can apply it to anything. It's not just on crypto. It's about a lot of other stuff. I love it, man. You guys make sure. And, and by the way, we have Polly's Pennies that's read the book. Matter of fact, he says, I'm 50 pages in. It's worth it. Guys, get out there. Go get yourself a copy of this amazing book, The Strategic Millionaire. And I always tell you guys this. I've never invented anything in my life. The, the, all the things that we've been able to do, whether it's from the businesses we own or even learning how to speak on stage, whatever it is, I followed other people people. I follow what successful people did. And obviously we have a successful person here that has a book that's created millions in all the things that he's done. Armando, my friend, I appreciate you in a major way. Also, mm -hmm. you guys do me a huge personal favor. Go over to our Crypto for Life YouTube channel. Make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe and notification yeah, bell. So you guys are, it's a great channel. Great chat. Thank you so much. I just my subscribe man. to it. So <laughs> I appreciate you, my man. Uh, Armando, uh, it means the world to me. Uh, guys, get over here uh, to our Crypto for Life page. Make sure you guys check that out. Also, tomorrow, I've got the one and only a guy who's, rep who's been representing a lot of people, a lot of people in this space. Uh, let me let me actually get up out of here so I can show you guys real quick. He is um, going to be on the show tomorrow. Meta Lawman will be on talking about some of the cases that he's dealing with. Uh, uh, just phenomenal thing. He actually has represented a lot of the people uh, that had to do with the FTX deal. Uh, I, I was looking at one of his videos the other day where he said he's had people who've lost everything, people who mentally just shut down people who, so we're going to talk about a lot of those things, guys. It's absolutely incredible. Metal Law Man tomorrow, uh, right here, uh, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. With all that being said, guys, make sure you follow my man, Armando. Make sure you get that book. My brother, I appreciate you in a major way. Thank you for coming on. I look forward to having you hopefully I in the near future. You have me, man. Uh, thank you so much for your patience, too. So, hey, man, you know what? It was worth it. You're worth it. And uh, guys, go out there and support this guy and all the things that he's doing. With that being said, I appreciate you guys in a major way. We'll see you guys, Mayan. Until next time, it's your boy James, AK6AJ. Peace.